Planet Vero Studio is powered by the Nolan Group of EXP Realty. MyNextHomeFinder.com Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm David Yak here. And I'm Susan Kellerhorn. <laughs> and you're listening or watching Yak About Today, where you never know where the show will go. So sit back, watch us, or get up, put your headphones on, go for a run, and listen to what we yak about today. So, thanks for listening, Susan. Thank you. Two weeks from today. Well, from today, <laughs> from the day we posted up on social media, but it might not be. It's a little less than two weeks from people who are watching us or listening to us on the radio or at other times. Oh, right, right. So, it's, so let, let me get it straight. It's two weeks if you're listening or watching live. And it's less than two weeks <laughs> if you're listening to this on the radio. That's true. Anyway, so do you think we're ready? Oh, God, I hope so, but I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah, what's to be terrified about? Just, what, 100 films that have to go right, <laughs> one after another, in yes. six venues? And we're having tons of filmmakers come into town and making sure they're in the right houses and... That's one of the cool things that we do is we offer filmmakers a place to stay. So we have home hosts and um, we've filled them all right now. But uh, if that's something you want to consider in the future, that would be a great thing. Um, volunteers, we still do need more volunteers for the festival. So if you're interested Absolutely. in volunteering, please, please, please go to our website, vbfilmfest.org, and look up opportunities to volunteer. So I'm making a major announcement. And you know what that is. So for those of you who got our most recent email, and I'm thinking, okay, that'll be the email that goes to the radio audience also. So what we've done is we have this big dinner. It's called... I Parlamere. <laughs> Parlamere. You changed the name of it. I can't remember things. Parlamere. <laughs> An evening by the sea. It's uh, in Vero Beach. It'll be held on uh, June 8th at 6 o'clock in the evening, and it's held at Grand Harbor Beach Club. And the setting is extraordinary. But what's more extraordinary, and here's the special, and I'm saving it because I hadn't even told you. No, you there's stuff you haven't told me. That, <laughs> yes, you really there are, are my work husband because my other husband doesn't tell me stuff either. <laughs> so... <laughs> so, so What's happening is Grand Harbor came in as a sponsor, and whereas we there was a two hundred uh, per plate uh, cost to the party, uh, because they came in as a sponsor, we thought that we'd pass the savings on to you guys, and it's now one hundred and fifty. It's our grand dinner that uh, you know uh, launches the uh, film festival, so you can go on vbfilmfest.org and buy your tickets for this brand new Parlamere, uh great dinner that we're planning. It'll have great entertainment. Uh, we've got the dueling pianos, which have been sort of taking the whole East Coast of Florida by storm, and uh, a couple of other surprises. So uh, I would go there and buy the ticket. But here's the other addition. So now we've given a, per a permanent 15% reduction on one ticket, 20% on two or more tickets, so now's the time to buy your tickets and to attend our dinner because everything just got so much cheaper. Yes, it did. But right. also, one of the things that you didn't mention when you said it's June 8th, that's Wednesday. So it's actually like a pre-festival event. Right. It's not during the festival. It's a pre-festival event. We do have some filmmakers that do plan to attend. They've purchased their tickets for that as well. Um, and But the filmmakers are going to be getting into everything at the festival. So no matter where you're at, you're probably going to meet a filmmaker. And right up front, I also want to, you know, we've been talking a lot about the film, uh, the film festival is made possible uh, by the generosity of our sponsors to begin with. 
and we want to thank them. And when you enter the films or any of the venues, you'll see all our great sponsors. So we hope you'll patronize uh, their establishments because they've been really good to us. And uh, by the way, we still are always open to new sponsors. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely. And, and the T-shirt I'm wearing, I, if I turn around, I think I'll lose the screen. But the T-shirt I'm wearing was provided by Barker. Barker Air Conditioning. All so. right. All right. So uh, we have a great show, right? We've got Sean Cisterna, who is the director of From the Vine. Yes, right. I'm really excited about this Our film. Our favorite wine movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's awesome. Um, Sean, Sean's film was accepted for our 2020, uh, not, yeah, 2020 film festival, and we um, obviously didn't get to show it there. And I called him up and said, please, can we show this film at our festival this year? Now, he is being distributed, and we really want to thank Samuel Goldwyn for allowing us to show this film um, because we're just super excited about it. It's a beautiful film. It shows even more incredibly on a big screen, which we're going to have. So I just hope everybody gets a chance to see it. And hi, Sean. How are you? I'm great, Susan. How are you? Thank you for having me. Ah, thank you for joining us. Please tell us a little bit about the film so that people know what it's about. Yeah, well, well. First of all, it's it's awesome to hear you and David talk about your stress, like putting together the festival, because <laughs> it mimics the same thing that us film people go through when we are making, you know, we're, when we're two weeks out from shooting and there's all chaos behind the scenes and you're trying to put on a confident face, but meanwhile, every, you know, the whole mechanism is moving to get the uh, the film close to the can. And I recall it was a similar sort of experience with with making from the vine. Um, yeah, From the Vine is a it's an international co-production between Canada and Italy. So that means our two countries sort of come together and our national film boards kind of co-finance the movie. So that's something different than uh, than um, my colleagues in, in the U.S. Uh, are able to fund their films, uh, you know, in Hollywood studios or with private financing. But in Canada and in Europe, we can kind of work together to form these co-productions. So that's how From the Vine was born. And it's the story of... Um, uh, this this guy Marco Gentile, who's played by Joe Pantoliano, you may recognize him from The Sopranos. He won an Emmy for that. He's in The Matrix, Memento, uh, Bad Boys, uh, Midnight Run. So Joe's uh, plays this um, guy named Marco Gentile, who uh, suffers a crisis of ethics with his job and decides to move to his family's uh, vineyard in in southern Italy and kind of use his business skills to. Um, bring back the you know derelict uh, vineyard to fruition using the help of the local townspeople. One of the things that I really liked in the film, and I was reminded of it as I was watching again this morning, is this the the surrealism, the neo Italian surrealism that you used. Can you tell me a little bit about that and why you chose to use it? Of course, yeah. So as as filmmakers, we're always looking for for themes to incorporate into our work. So you know, having been a film student, we studied uh, Italian neorealism from the 1940s, kind of post-war uh, Italian filmmaking. And that's when all the film studios were kind of, um, you know, bombed during the war. And so Italian filmmakers had to resort to filming uh, with uh, non-traditional actors like regular people and uh, in you know everyday lo locations they didn't have studios anymore so that's how this renaissance this Italian neorealism was born and so we kind of took those uh, tools those rules and uh, applied them to our film so we don't shoot in any studios we shoot in um, you know existing locations in in Acerenza where we filmed this movie a lot of the people that you see in the, um, the sporting characters like the the background players are all local people from that that town and um it was a fun way to mix you know a, a mix of hollywood actors uh, um, actors from rome and uh these these um townsfolk who've never appeared in a, a film before so it was a really unique way to make a make a movie for sure where where did the idea come from yeah so from the vine is a um, it's based on a novel called Finding Marco. It's by uh, Ken Cancellara, who's an Italian-Canadian writer. And so when I was looking for a project to do with, uh, with Europe, I mean, I thought this would be a perfect fit. Um, and what I 
I responded to it because you know even though even though the novel is is pretty introspective, like it's kind of hard to adapt. We found this one chapter where you know there was a wine component, and we thought you know maybe let's focus on you know using the themes in the book, but tell the the plot with this uh, with this um, you know sort of a subplot about wine and uh, having those two kind of connections. We went to Italy to do a location scout of the area and incorporated some of the uh, location photos into the script as well. So we were kind of always writing with the sense of, you know, where we were going to film this uh, this uh, whimsical sort of adult fairy tale. And how did you pick uh, where you were filming in Italy? Uh, we shot in Acerenza, which is um, where the novelist is from. So Ken's um, Ken was born in in this small little village, and it's about five hours south of Rome. It's kind of like a, if you look at Italy, like a map of Italy. It's it's the uh, kind of crux of the boot here, the heel of the boot, and that's where um, Acerenza is, is situated in the south. Um, and you know, it 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 was this. It's this pretty special region in the world where this type of varietal called Alianico is grown. So it's got this, uh, it's, it's mountainous clay, it's volcanic ash that the, um, that the vines kind of grow in. And uh, I had never heard of this variety before, Alianico. So it was a unique way to not only construct a, you know, a romantic and comedic movie, but uh, incorporate something for the, the wine lovers as well, maybe teach them a little bit about wine growing in that in that part of the world we should probably try and see if one of the distributors that are bringing wine could bring that variety i don't know is it available in the u.s do you know i don't know it's, it's tough to find like it's uh, certainly has to be imported it's not uh, a grape or a, a wine that grows in 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 the u.s so um i don't know i'll see what i can do to kind of put you in touch with any sort of distributors <laughs> that might be I'm, I'm curious what kind of wine is it i mean besides the name of it is it like yeah. a, a cab or is it what is it no it's it's alianico del vulture it's uh i don't know how to describe it it's 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 dark red it's it's got a smoky feeling um a smoky taste because it's grown in that volcanic uh volcanic soil um some of the rules around growing it are you cannot um you know the winemaker cannot irrigate so it's all has to be natural water from from the sky so that if you're caught you know, hosing down the the plants to make them grow. It's just the it's not it doesn't have that Italian stamp of approval on it. It it truly has to be grown in in such a unique way that the uh, the the guild of the Alianico winemakers uh, will 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 approve of. It's sort of like the old days, isn't it? It right is. Back 150 years ago, we just prayed for rain. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you know what? I think we need to go to our break. And then we will get back with Sean on the second half of our show. All right. Hold on, Sean. Dr. Stephen Tate offers the safest and most efficient technique for customized cataract surgery. Patients are personally counseled on the best approach for their needs and lifestyle. From multifocal lenses that allow for distance and reading vision to toric lenses that correct astigmatism, let New Vision Eye Center guide you safely through your options. For world-class eye care on the Treasure Coast, visit newvisioneyecenter.com. Wild, untamed, hilarious. Riverside Theater's Comedy Zone. Experience the Treasure Coast's best stage for live stand-up comedy this Friday and Saturday night at 7 and 9 p.m. You'll laugh till it hurts. Start your night at Live in the Loop with live entertainment, food and drinks, and after, be entertained with nationally ranked comedians, including an opening act and headliner with cabaret-style seating and food and drink table service. Get tickets at RiversideTheater.com. At Sunshine Furniture, our 35,000-square-foot showroom is filled with the largest selection of in-stock coastal furniture on the Treasure Coast. Dining and bedroom sets, occasional tables, sofas, sleeper sofas, love seats, and chairs, including lots of slipcover styles from Universal, Four Seasons, and Capri. We also have a gallery of Tommy Bahama and Lexington furniture with styles designed for a relaxed approach to the finer things in life. Right now, we're having a summer sale with lots of great markdowns, including all pictures, lamps, and accessories half 
price. Sunshine Furniture, 1295 US 1 in Vero Beach next to Planet Fitness. Family owned and operated since 1991. Don't forget to visit our outlet and closeout store directly across the street and visit our website at sunshinefurnituresurecasual.com. Sunshine Furniture brightens up your day. Sunshine Furniture Hey, and we are back. I'm David Yuck here, here with Susan Kellerhorn. I only say her name in case she, really, she forgets it every once in a while. I do. <laughs> anyway, uh, just before we get back to our guest, uh, everybody knows that the show is sponsored by uh, New Vision Eye Center, and they've been with us for about eight years now, and we're so grateful to have them because without them, we couldn't be talking about the films that you will love at the festival. And we are back with our guest, Sean. We're Hi, back. Sean. <laughs> Hi. So anyway, um, tell me a little bit, you know, I actually, Dave and I were talking and there are some characters that you have in the movie that I just love. First of all, you worked with children. How was that? And how did you get them to jump over those little scary, I don't even know what that space was, but they scared me. <laughs> so, yeah, so. it was kind of like a, if you can imagine like a balcony, but um, it's crumbled away over the years. And the, if you fall into one of the holes in that balcony, you end up plummeting to your death. Like it's uh, this this city that we shot in Acerenza is on you know this two thousand year old town on top of a mountain, um, and so it's just the, the the views are breathtaking with the Italian rolling hills and the the golden sunshine. But um, yeah, I guess when you're two thousand year old, you know things start to to fall apart. That was all obviously a dig digital trickery. We wouldn't put uh, young children in, in harm's way. Um, so we uh, we had them jump over, you know, pieces of tape, and then our visual artists would go in it and paint that uh, section out to make it their stunt look a little bit more dangerous than it was. Oh, good. I guess I was a little worried. <laughs> they were adorable. But yeah, work, working with those kids, um, working with the kids was uh, a, a challenge because um, we hired them when we got to Italy. And luckily, there was there's not many kids in that town because it's uh, a fairly old community. And all the young people tend to move away to bigger cities to uh, to start their careers. Like Vero so Beach. So luckily, there's... Yeah, yeah, sounds just like our town. <laughs> yeah. So there was luckily there was this one restaurant open in town that uh, was a young couple and they had kids. So the kids in the in the film are the restaurant owner's son and daughter. Oh, and, so they weren't um, professional actors. They, not at all. No, they only spoke Italian, so I couldn't communicate them other otherwise through a translator. Um, but they, yeah, they had no reservations about being on camera for the first time, and I think they did a great job. You know, there's a lot of funny yeah. moments, but one of your characters that I found extremely funny was Enzo. Tell me about him and tell me how he <laughs> became part. Was he part of the original book or did you create him or how did he exist? Uh, Enzo is a creation, a fictional creation from our screenwriter. Um, we wanted to incorporate some uh, comedic relief into into the film. I mean, I mean Joe has a pretty... Uh, um, daunting task of, of leading the entire film and he's got to be the straight guy but uh, Enzo was brought in for a bit of comedic relief and when we found out that yes there is an Italian law that uh, pro uh, protects squatters so Enzo's a squatter he lives in in uh, the character Mark's old house and uh, and is found squatting there when when Mark returns um, and so Enzo yeah he's um, you'd think he would be Italian, but we brought him over from Toronto to shoot the, the film. He's a popular Canadian actor named uh, Tony Napo, and he doesn't have any teeth in real life, so it was uh, great to <laughs> make him look a little bit disheveled. I think he had a hockey injury at one point, so he has uh, I, no teeth. Uh, haven't <laughs> most, the, most Canadians the had a hockey injury? I know my brother-in-law, who's Canadian, has no front teeth as well. <laughs> so. yeah. Yes, it's, it's true. All of us have been dinged very hard by a puck at some point in our lives, for sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, a lot, I mean, a lot of the Italian-speaking actors are actually from Toronto. So we have a big Italian population here. And uh, because it's a co-production, we needed to bring as much Canadian labor over to satisfy the requirements of the... Uh, the funding system. So that's what we did. 
And now the film is about relationships. Can you go into a little bit about that? Because it's, it's all about relationships yeah. and how people cope. It is. Yeah. So um, first of all, you know, we rarely get to see like a, uh, you know, it has negative connotations, but a, a boomer sort of uh, romance on screen. Um, I, I, I loved watching movies when I was a kid with my parents. It was fun to see them. Uh, their ages reflected on screen when I was a when I was a kid. So this is kind of like a you know a feel good, safe sort of movie for uh, you know older adults to kind of watch and enjoy. So it's pretty tame in, in that capacity, but it's also you know a, a family story. Yeah, <laughs> it's also a family story about a um, you know a, a newer generation kind of taking over and and working uh, her way up the ladder in in uh, Paula Brancati's character um, Laura. So she's trying to find her way in life and um, and ends up traveling to Italy to, you know, what she thinks is bring her father back home and, and stop this sort of mental breakdown. But uh, she ends up being enchanted by the community as well and uh, and sees a future in, in being there herself. Well, Sean, thank you so much for sharing your film with us. I know our audience is going to love it. They're going to love seeing it on a big screen. And I'm really excited to share it with Vero Beach. I think, David, though, we need to talk a little bit about the festival now. I want to ask if Sean's coming to the festival. Oh, he can't make it. I am so oh, bummed. I, I am to. so bummed. Yeah. So. I uh, Travel has become increasingly difficult for, for those who live across a border. Uh, so I'm not sure if you follow the news, but uh, Canada is like our airports are kind of shut down and it takes five hours to get an international flight uh, through security. So something is prohibiting us from visiting your uh, your fine country. Is it a COVID? It's a, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, the, I don't know, the Canadian Commission of Transport Authority needs all these forms and it's just backing up flight after flight. As soon as you land in Toronto, you have to wait on a plane for three hours before you can get off the plane to get into oh, no. customs. That's cool. So it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a headache right now here in our fair country. Well, Sean, when you actually are able to easily cross the border and come visit, you have an open invitation from me and you can stay with us. That's right. <laughs> so, thank you. I Thanks, Sean. Very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, and guys. I hope thank we you see your me. next film at our next festival as well. <laughs> so. I will definitely be there in person for that one, for sure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Right. Thanks. So anyway, let's get back to talking about the festival. Are we talking parties finally? I think we're talking parties. What party do you like? I love the 80s party. The one, what do, what do we call it? it it's the zoo, the zoo, zoo crew 80s party. That's it. So let's explain how this came about. There is a film, and uh, we may have talked about we this. We have talked about right? it, but let's talk about it more because okay. I think people need to come and show up for so this film. So this is wonderful film, and especially for people who are from the New York, New Jersey area, which is the two of us. Yes, and he keeps telling me, what do you tell me about where I'm from? The swamps. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the swamps of New Jersey. <laughs> the swamps. Anyway, that's actually key to the story. So there was a DJ uh, down in Tampa, Florida. And he was approached by a fledgling radio station up in Jersey. It was a New York radio station, but it had no audience. It was really nothing. And somebody had invested a little money in it. And so they hired uh, this guy, Scott Shannon. He uh, came here from Florida. Came out of Tampa, Florida. And within 78 days, it became the number one a radio station in New York and the most listened to, right? And I, th I think it had the biggest well, you know audience. What? We better the... tell about the party, though, because our time is running out. Oh, no. Here, here's the party <laughs> in 50 seconds. <laughs> so it takes place in the 80s. He made a lot of 80s uh, stars, including uh, Madonna and several others. They're all in the movie. So we're following it with an 80s dance party, and everybody has to drop uh, to dress up in their best 80s uh, outfit, and... I went on Amazon and I bought one. You you shamed me into it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm going to look a little desperately seeking Susan, except I am Susan. Anyway, it's one of the many parties we're going to have. So we have the opening dinner, and we do have a major party every single night, and the closing party on a Sunday afternoon. 
So. And we also have after our parties. There's the after hours hangout over at Edgewood Eatery. It's so it's supposed to be a secret. So don't tell anybody, but do tell everybody. Right. <laughs> and we have a VIP lounge for VIPs. Yes. Take care, everybody. We'll Thanks. see you next week. Bang, 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 bang,